the final results of the elections of the People's Assembly will be announced tomorrow morning in the Justice Palace in El Mazze. <laughs> Students overcome terrorism and continue their studies while the damages of the terrorist explosions is being repaired. And six Chinese observers joined the UN Observer's mission in Syria. Good afternoon and welcome to News in English on Syrian TV. Judge Khalaf Al-Azawi, chairman of the Higher Committee of Elections, announced that the final results of the elections of the People's Assembly would be announced and declared at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning at the Palace of Justice in El Mazi neighborhood. The committee has received the results from all the election centers and the subsidiary departments after studying objections and taking the necessary decisions to deal with them. Terrorist gangs continued to target national expertise. Yesterday, they murdered Colonel Ahmed Salman Mu'alla in Jobar. Five terrorists opened fire at the colonel who stood before his house preparing to go to work. In Dar'a, another terrorist gang murdered Lieutenant Colonel Qais Sarut of the branch of criminal security in Dar'a together with his driver. A terrorist gang in two cars opened fire as the officer was leaving a barber's shop. They kidnapped his driver and killed him in cold blood. In Idlib, a terrorist gang murdered the young man Usama Bahar Gandur in the countryside. Six terrorists stormed the pharmacy where he was working and shot him dead. John Glazer, an editor at the American anti-war website, asserted that the U.S. and its allies were supporting the armed gangs of terrorism in Syria, although they admitted that those gangs were linked to Al-Qaeda. Mr. Glazer said in his article that American officials asserted that members of Al-Qaeda joined the armed gangs of terrorism to fight against the Syrian government. He added that some prominent Congress members were publicly defending the support of the so-called Free Army with weapons and training. The two terrorist explosions in Al-Qazaz have affected schools and universities, killing and wounding students and causing heavy damage to buildings. All children cried when they heard the explosions. Panic spread everywhere, and children's laughter was placed by tears of fear. They watched terrible scenes for the first time in their young lives. Children are the future. That is why the criminals targeted them. The explosions caused heavy damage in the building of the Faculty of Electric Engineering and other schools in the area. The explosions created fear in the hearts of the pupils who ran away from death leaving their books covered with dust. Many of them were critically wounded. The explosion left the students terrified. This was a real tragedy. The teachers rushed to save the wounded students. The damage in school and college buildings showed that terrorism targeted the students. Many of the victims were carried to hospitals. <laughs> I was on my way to college when the explosion took place in Al-Qazaz, followed by another worse explosion. The will to live and the determination of the students caused them to defy this horrible terrorism. The students insistently continued their studies. In addition to university and school students, terrorism targets Syria's youth. The young girl Dima Samir Farah was one of the victims of terrorism. She missed the bus on Thursday so she took a cab with her colleague to work, but she never made it. She was killed by the terrorist explosion in the Qazaz area. Dima usually went out at half past seven in the morning to reach her place of work at eight o'clock. At 10 o'clock, one of her colleagues told me that she took a cab with her colleague. Two minutes later, he saw the explosion 100 meters away. Dima was killed instantly. May God take revenge from the terrorists. This is an act that no human being can approve. <laughs> well, works exhilarate to repair the damage left by the terrorists at the educational centers in Al-Qazaz area. The repair works are being accomplished with the help of the students themselves.
The students of informatics insist on continuing the educational process to restore the pulse of life to their college. Hence, they rushed to participate in the maintenance to remove the effects of damage that were left in different parts of the faculty, asserting that the wheel of education will not stop despite the attacks. The workshops of maintenance and repair in and around al Qazaz school are trying hard to remove the damage caused by the terrorists' explosions, which kept the school children away from their class seats. Once again, the Syrians confirm their national unity, asserting that the will of the Syrian people is stronger than any vicious attack against the innocent people. A delegation representing the Syrian community in Saudi Arabia visited Syria to be briefed on the reality of the situation. Members of the delegation expressed complete support for their homeland in confrontation of the conspiracy being hatched against it. A delegation of the UN observers comprising 12 observers visited Al-Hirsh, northern and southern entrances of the city of Hama and al sabuniya neighborhoods. The observers hoped that all parties would cooperate with them to make their mission a success, indicating that they are preparing and sending daily reports on the events and the areas they are visiting. For his part, Governor of Hama, Anas Naim, stressed during his meeting with the delegation that the governorate is offering all necessary facilitations and measures for making the UN observers mission a success. He called on the delegation to verify the information, events and testimonies that they listened to during their meetings with the citizens. The observer delegation also visited Al Khalidiyah and Al Bayada neighborhoods in Homs and met the locals there. Another group visited Al Qasir city in Homs countryside. Hassan Saqlawi, media official in the UN Observers Mission, said in a press statement that the, member, that the number of UN observers in Syria reached 189. Groups of international observers are distributed in the cities of Homs, Hama, Idlib, Dar'a, and Damascus. The spokesman of the peacekeeping office in the Chinese Ministry of Defense has announced that six Chinese military observers affiliated to the UN headed to Syria to join the International Observers Mission. The number of the Chinese military observers in Syria would reach eight, as other two Chinese observers reached Syria on the 20th of last April. The Ministry of State for Environmental Affairs signed an agreement of cooperation in the field of raising environmental awareness with the Union of Revolutionary Youth. The Minister of Environmental Affairs, Dr. Kauka Beldaye, asserted that work in this field would carry out the tasks to preserve the environment according to Legislative Decree 21 of 2012. It will develop awareness of the importance of protecting the environment with all means. Mr. Elias Shahoud of the Youth Union stressed the importance of attracting youth to voluntary work in this field. The two sides will exchange information about the environment and publish this information on their websites. This uh, important memorandum of understanding between the Ministry of Environment and the Youth Union uh, will be signed today. The main subject is to um, uh, to use uh, this important uh, potential of youth in our society to improve the environmental situation. Uh well, this is the end of this news bulletin. For more news, log on to our website in English, syriaonline.sy. I'll leave you now with Khaled and Economy News. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The Kuwaiti Syrian Insurance Company has got the approval and is now registered at the